Hello everyone, uh, this is a, an answer to a question I got from one of uh, the subscribers, uh, guy, the guys at Crank, uh, they've got a very good channel so that's a shout out to them and what his question was about, he's thinking about buying a, an oscilloscope and what one do I recommend? So I thought the, the first way to do is, I went to this website, I read this a few years ago, it's called remington.info and he has a lot of good advice on diagnostic test equipment. So I'll take you down to what he said about oscilloscopes. Let me see, I'll just see if I can find it here. There we go. It was that bit there. Oscilloscopes are the definitive method of set sensor testing. I think we'd all agree with that. So he goes through here a lot of cheaper scopes. And I've actually got one like that. It's a bit fiddly to use, but still it's quite cheap. And also this one here. He recommends also the Unity T. They're quite a, just the size of a multimeter, so they're quite handy to use either. But it was this bit here that caught my eye when uh, he talked about uh, a cheap oscilloscope. So he was saying here, Pico is the market leader. Pico scope that is. So, and he says he owns a non-automotive, and that's obviously an older an older scope. But what he did say was this line here: Don't discount Pico non-automotive scopes. The only advantage offered by Pico automotive scopes over non-automotive scopes as the software has preset probe settings for automotive use. Well, that's true in one sense, but it just shows you that, I mean, th th there's no doubt about it, the automotive scope is a good scope, and it's fast, and it's built for the job. But if you're on a limited budget, or you're an enthusiast like myself, you, you, can't, you can't really justify spending all that money on a scope, so... He he goes on to say, just copy the settings from the 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 automotive scope into your normal scope, and that's what I do. It works pretty well. So, to me, Pico scope is the way to go. It's easy to use, and if you see lots of folk on YouTube, have got it. So, I would definitely go for the Pico scope. The other the other scope I've seen on the YouTube, and it looked quite as good as well. Is that it's called GTO. Here's a good channel. This is just giving you a few ideas. It's this guy here called Diag Diagnose Dan. Uh, he's brilliant. So I, I check his channel out. So it said uh, it's called a GTO scope. Uh, it's available in Europe, but uh, it's got a built in test and everything like that. It looks really quite good. I'll leave you to check that yourself and uh, have a look at that. So here's the Pico scope here. This is the advantages of having the, the, the big one, but you can see prices are ain't cheap. Six hundred and ninety nine pound for the two channels, and it just keeps going up and up and up. But what I should I say? This guy at Remington, oh, let's see, I'll just show you the bit there. He was asking about the. Uh, there we go. No single occasion have I ever used more than two channels at once, and I think that would be true for ninety percent of the time when you are using a scope. You're o you're always using about one, or just two channels because it's that painful to connect four channels. Let's be honest about that. So. I think a two-channel scope uh, would just be fine. Uh, and they were saying about the the automotive one has this uh, connect detect, so that shows you when you've got a good connection. Uh, the memory buffer, uh, high resolution. So that this little scope that I've got, this uh, there it's here. Let me see. We go to that. This one here, Pico Scope Two Thousand. It is only is it eight eight kilo samples or something like that. And you do notice it when you zoom in in the signal. I mean, if you obviously you've got the more expensive one, uh, you're going to be able to zoom a lot more. But one way to overcome that is once you capture your signal, capture another signal, but just shorten your time base. And that allows you to get a greater detail in that particular area. But in saying that, the the amount of detail you get in the signal is still excellent. So uh, I kind of really see that being a problem. What else did it say about... Well, here we go. It was... Uh, with the automotive one, you can do flex ray. Now I've never touched flex ray. That's that's the new standard. But uh, the the cheap one, this one that I've got, uh, the PicoScope two thousand, hit this can bus no bother at all. And obviously this got USB three. The cheap one's got USB three. Now <laughs> here's the thing: always remember and use this lead because I, I remember about reading one guy who was having terrible trouble, but he switched out for a longer read, a uh, longer lead, and that was that was the, the bottom of his problem. So, it is a great scope, but it's very expensive. So, and also you can configure this little scope to suit yourself as well. Uh, there we go. 
the price is for 50 megahertz 249 and everything like that so starting to consider the other thing about this wee cheap scope which the automotive one has not got is the arbitrary waveform generator and the uh, actually here's another good channel a guy uses it ky home garage garage i think it's american garage <laughs> so th there it's there there's the web there's the youtube page there ky and he actually uses this the, the 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 waveform generator to do bypass tests so that one i think it was the eba sensor bypass that was that was good you should watch that that shows you the capabilities of the scope uh, what else was I going to say? The other thing, let's go back to the automotive one again. Uh, just a couple of things. This has also got the, what do you call it, the database. Now, or the library that they call it. I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, you're, you're able to uh, talk to other people online and there's a library and no good waveforms and everything like that. So it's kind of worth its weight in gold. But if you're like myself, you can muck about and you usually find someone out there. Uh, the other thing that automotive has got is the the protection up to 200 volts without attenuators. But as I showed you in my last video, you could use these hand tape things and they work quite fine. Another reason I would go for the PicoScope as well, when I compare it to the Snap-on Veris that I've got, it's a real pain in the neck to use that scope. Once you've used the Pico, you absolutely hate that Veris scope because it's, it's not in the same league at all. So you also talked about uh, accessories, so here's one of the accessories I bought, this was a Sealy a current clamp, uh, I'm sure when I got that I got it for eBay, for this company it was about £60 pound. Uh, and I use that, you can actually use it, it's only meant to go up to, is it, uh, there you go, 80 amps, but you can actually measure up to 250 amps, so you can do starting circuits with this, just set your scope to 2.2 volts uh, at the, the vertical, and uh, you can see it pick up, so it works, it works great on a petrol car. I've also used it on diesels, obviously initially it goes over 250, but in a normal diesel, what is it cranking about 230 amps? So it's just in range and it works, it works quite f fine. Another accessory I bought for the, the PicoScope was these cheap hand tech leads. Uh, you can see there you can actually, uh, you can piggyback, you can piggyback another 4 mil connector, so that's ideal for that current clamp I showed you, you can just connect into there. So they they worked out £10 each, they, they were good. The cable's a bit stiff right enough, and <laughs> when you get them, you, you always, there's a wee screw goes in here. You've got to tighten up because they, whoever made them doesn't uh, put them tight enough. So I've got, two, I've got two of them, and because they're three metres long, you can sit in the car and they work fine. So I'd go for them. Uh, these things are good. Pearson probes. Now the ones I've got are not flute. I got them from eBay, but they're exactly the same, and they were thirty pounds. And uh, you get a good connection to these things, so they're worth it too. And what else was in there? Oh no, I can't even remember what that was there. But here's a.